Before I give my speech, I thought I'd tell everyone about my special event, Extemporaneous. <clears throat> now what happens in this event is basically you get there, you do whatever event you have first, depending on how you're scheduled, and you go straight to what they call an extemp prep room. Prep room. The time you draw <clears throat> from there, you get an hour to make a speech, practice it, and then give it when that hour is up. You, get, you can get any range of topics, including from some, like, will Russia invade Ukraine? That's an old one, but it's one of them. To my topic today, to what degree will China's development of hypersonic ballistic missiles threaten the security of its neighbors? Today, I was asked a very important question that needs to be addressed by many countries and its citizens. To what degree will China's development of super <coughs> hypersonic ballistic missiles threaten the security of its neighbors? We will look at this question by first examining what these missiles are, then looking at what problems and what protection we need against them, and finally, what the most important factor about these missiles is. Well, you may ask, what are hypersonic ballistic missiles? Well, if you've ever seen an ICBM, or Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, it's that, but on steroids. In an article made by the Heritage in 2022, it stated that these missiles can travel over two times faster than traditional ICBMs. They are also they are also the same they are also at the same time smaller but pack the same if not bigger punch. With this speed they can reach the United States or any other country in the world at record times making it the fastest missile that's ever been developed. What protection can we develop against them. One of the greatest concerns about these missiles, missiles, one of the greatest concerns about these missiles is that both the US and NATO have no protection against them. Wherein we did have protection against ICBMs. So in a global missile conflict, America and the rest of the world would be vulnerable to these. The good news in an article by The Guardian in 2022, a defensive initiative up against these missiles is being developed. How it would work is by utilizing the old ICBM defenses that utilize lasers and destroy and detonate the warhead while it is traveling to the intended location. What they would do to this is by making, is by upgrading these rays, making them more powerful and faster to their target basically tuning them up. The most important factor about these missiles is that we do not have them. Meaning that China is ahead in the arms race, which is never good. As it's shown many times throughout the Cold War, that you never want your opponent to have the upper hand on you. Today, we talked about China's development of hypersonic ballistic missiles. First, we learned what they were. Then, we looked at many def uh, <clears throat> how they are bad and a defense to counteract them. And finally, we looked at the most important factor about them and why they are a threat to, and the threat that they propose to us all.
My name is Charlie, and this might be my last transmission. I don't know, I've lost all track of time at this point, but I estimate I've been lost anywhere between 15 minutes and 5 days. My juice box is empty. I'm down to my last three gummy bears. Two gummy bears. And I've resorted to stocking up on the complimentary donut balls from the baked goods section. Anyways, I need to keep moving so I can find the water fountain before sundown. This is Survivor Kid, Supermarket Edition. It all started out like any other old day trip to the grocery store. However, what six-year-old Charlie thought would be a quick run for a few items ended up escalating into a nightmare. The disaster beginning when Charlie gets lost after his dad asks him to run and grab a gallon of milk. Will Charlie ever be able to find his dad again, or will he be lost wandering the aisles of the grocery store for days? Find out in Survivor Kid by Abram Sand. Charlie! Do you think you could run to the dairy section and uh, grab some milk for me? That was where I broke the first rule of supermarket survival. Always decide on a rendezvous point before splitting up. What a darn fool I was. I trotted off oblivious to the fatal error I had just made. So can I, like, help you find me, think, little guy? Um, where is the skin milk? Um, <laughs> do you mean, like, skim milk? Um, it looks like milk, but it tastes like water. Oh, definitely skim, yeah. <laughs> here you go, little boy. Uh, so are you, like, here all by yourself? You seem kind of young to be, like, wandering around all alone. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm here with my dad. Oh, okay. Well, do you, like, know where he is? Because I could totally call for him on the intercom. In that moment, I could see the greatest humiliation of my life playing out. Charlie at aisle nine! I repeat, Charlie at aisle nine! No! No. Uh, we know where we're gonna meet up, but thank you, though. Oh, uh, okay. Well, uh, like, let me know if you need anything. Five minutes in, and I'd already broken the second rule of supermarket survival. Never, ever let your pride get in the way of the mission. It all could have been done right then and there, but no. Mr. Tough Guy can find his daddy all by himself. I checked the bread aisle, candy aisle, seasonings, canned goods. I even went to that weird natural food section where they make potato chips out of celery. <laughs> That's when the bitter truth dawned on me. I have been forgotten! <laughs> Why have you forsaken me? <laughs> I, I always suspected that I got on his nerves. <laughs> I mean, why else would he make me grow some Brussels sprouts? <laughs> Go to bed at nine. In the summer! <laughs> no. No, no, I have to stay positive here, or else I really won't have a chance. That's when I decided to go to the deli section. I mean, in a survival situation like this one, you have to load up on protein whenever you find it. I mean, it started out innocent enough. Heck, there was even a free display of lunch meat samples. I was on my fifth turkey nibbler when I heard, Hey, kid, you think those are all for you or what? Huh? What? I turned to see the most snarly, gnarly, gruff, and tough butcher I had ever seen. I can still see his stained apron and the blood dripping off his cleaver. I thought for sure I'd be next. So you think those are all for you or what? Oh, um, well, I mean, it's, a, it's like pro pro protein or survival, so what are you blabbering on about? If you're so hungry, come back here with me. Now, normally I wouldn't follow someone with a giant meat cleaver and a blood-stained apron anywhere, but the dire circumstances had left me no choice. I walked past the deli counter and into the butcher's den. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't petrified. The metallic tables towering over my head, the stainless steel saw blades, and just about every other instrument of tenderizing torture you could imagine. But then he did something I was not expecting. Here, kid, if you're so hungry, I'll give you something to munch on. But you gotta promise to stop eating all the samples out there. Cause the other customers want some too, okay? Sir, yes, sir. Good. Now this here is some of the best ham we have. It's triple barrel honey smoked, rack aged, and double basted. That sound good to you? Sir, yes, sir. I couldn't 
believe my good fortune. Here I was thinking I was going to be made into some kind of cold cut. But I ended up getting some of the most delectable delicatessen work I'd ever tasted. Mwah. I couldn't wait to tell Dad about it. Oh wait. Dad. I still need to find Dad. I ran back into the aisles. But before I knew it, I was lost again. Seconds turned to minutes, and minutes turned to hours. I was getting hungry again. Hadn't I just eaten? All the aisles were starting to look the same. I was starting to get delirious. That's when I decided it would probably be a good idea to go outside and get some fresh air. I walked out into the parking lot. I had to squint to see through the searing sun. The endless aisles of the supermarket were replaced by even more endless rows of cars. And what's worse, I was starting to feel even more and more delirious. Now the next portion of this story might be kind of hard to believe, but I promise this is exactly how it happened. I lay down on the curb outside the front door and I closed my eyes until I felt a sharp tap on my forehead. Uh, it's just a pigeon. Who are you calling just a pigeon? Um, did you just talk? Why would you ask if I could talk if you didn't think I could talk? Well, humans are so dense, always pushing us and kicking us out of the way. I hate humans. Ah! Hey, that's not fair. I like birdies. Back at home, I used to throw out old bread for the birds to eat. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Did you say? Old bread? Um, yeah. And you might hurt potentially on half some of this bread? Like, like on you? Like in your pockets or something? I mean, I do have a couple of donut balls. Donut balls? I'm sorry. Do I say people are the worst? No, I meant sheep. Okay, I'll give one to you, but you have to promise to do something for me first. Fly around this parking lot, see if you can find my dad anywhere. Squawk! Well, what does your dad look like? Um, uh, uh, well, he's really tall. Uh, he, uh, he has brown hair, big mustache. Uh, I think he was wearing a flannel shirt. Is your dad some kind of lumberjack or something? Should I be the poor guy with an axe? That sarcasm isn't getting you any closer to my donut balls, bird brain. Okay, so I might have been hallucinating from the heat or something in the donut balls. But either way, I found myself cutting deals with pigeons in the Megamar parking lot. My prospects were not looking good. But before I knew it, the pigeon had come back. Squawk! Okay, so I have good news and I have bad news. The bad news is I didn't find your dad. Oh, well, well, what's the good news? I did find this really shiny piece of tin foil. <laughs> Some sparkle! <laughs> oh, well thanks anyway, I guess. Here's your donut bowl. Squawk! I walked back into the store. Dejected. Beaten. I lost all hope that I would ever reunite with my dad. But just as I was about to lay down and submit to my dad, I heard a voice from the aisle over. Yeah, honey, will do. <laughs> Anything else you need us to grab while we're here? <gasps> dad! Yep. Oh, here comes Charlie. We'll see when we get home. Oh, Dad, Dad. I never thought I'd be so glad to see you in my life. Oh. Well, that's uh, very sweet, Charlie. So what happened? Did you get the milk? 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 I make up for days and all you can think about is not milk. What do you mean, Charlie? It's been like five minutes. What? But... But uh, uh, bar barrel-aged ham and uh, butcher and uh, uh, talking pigeons and I... Uh, well, looks like somebody's ready for nap time when we get home. <laughs> oh, and by the way, your mother called. Can you quick run and grab a carton of eggs before we check out? Oh, here we go again. <laughs>
If you've ever traveled to bigger cities like Los Angeles or New York, you may have noticed the constant smog in the air. This smog is mainly due to pollution from our vehicles. Vehicles are a major contributor to air pollution. However, we rely on them to get us from place to place as well as move goods around the world. Today, we must ask the question, given the continued demand for American transportation, how can we as American citizens assume the most responsibility when traveling on our highways? We will start by drilling into the problems with today's gasoline, then discovering <clears throat> the benefits of an alternative fuel ethanol, and finally, fueling up on ways to increase ethanol usage. We can't ignore the problems that our most popular fuel for our vehicles, gasoline, causes. It is well known that gasoline vapor contributes to air pollution. According to a 2022 article from the U.S. Department of Energy, a typical passenger vehicle emits about 4.6 metric tons of carbon dioxide. This assumes that the average vehicle on the road today has a fuel economy of about 22 miles per gallon and travels around 12,000 miles per year. <clears throat> Every gallon of gasoline burned creates about 9,000 grams of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide falls into the category of a greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gas, as defined by Oxford languages, is any gaseous compound that has the ability to absorb infrared radiation. This allows sunlight to enter the Earth's atmosphere more than it normally would. This sunlight then reflects off the Earth's surface as heat and is trapped in the atmosphere, causing the overall temperature of the Earth to increase. Not only does gasoline contribute to air pollution, but it also causes the United States to depend on foreign relations for our gasoline. The U.S. imports more gasoline than it can produce. According to the Energy Information Administration, stated in 2021 that the United States imported 7.86 million barrels of finished motor gasoline a day in 2021. This was a 13.5% increase from the year before. The two main countries that the U.S. imports its gasoline from are both Canada and Mexico. These are not dependable sources for our gasoline, as Canada's oil fields lie in tar sands, which results in dirty oil, and Mexico's oil fields are projected to dry up within a decade. So who will the U.S. turn to? The next leading <coughs> exporters of gasoline are Saudi Arabia, Ecuador, Colombia, and Iraq. All of these countries are also stated on the <coughs> stated on the State Department's travel warning list due to the country's long-term protracted conditions that make a country dangerous or unstable. If the U.S. does not find an alternative fuel, it will be forced to look to hostile nations for its fuel, <coughs> posing threats to our national security and economy. After drilling into the problems with today's gasoline, we will now discover the benefits of a great alternative fuel, ethanol. According to the University of Illinois, Ethanol is a grain alcohol that can be mixed in many <clears throat> modern gasolines for use in modern vehicles. How it is made is it, it is fermented. How it is made is it can be fermented from many sources of starch, including, including corn and sugar cane. Ethanol is a cleaner, more environmentally friendly alternative. Ethanol is made of steam using only 30. 15,000 BTUs, or, or British, thermal British thermal units, as defined by Oxford languages, is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one pound of water to <coughs> one degree Fahrenheit. This is only a third of what gasoline refineries use. The ethanol also burns better because it is an oxygen hit, meaning that both the oxygen molecules in the air and in the fuel mix to help burn the ethanol more completely. This extra amount of oxygen also helps burn regular gasoline better when it is mixed with ethanol. This equates to a more efficient fuel and less pollutants being released from your vehicle. Since ethanol can be produced locally using corn, there is no, no need to rely heavily 
on foreign relations. According to a 2021 article published on oilprice.com, the United States spends $991 million a day on importing finished motor gasoline. Instead of investing this money into hostile countries, the U.S. can increase ethanol usage and invest this money back into itself. The U.S. is also the number one exporter of ethanol, which helps our country's GDP, or growth domestic product, and economy. A study published by the Renewable Fuels Association in 2000, 2021 found that ethanol directly influenced the creation of over 62,000 jobs and another 242 indirectly influenced jobs. <clears throat> Investing in the production of ethanol not only benefits our environment, but also our country's economy. Now that, now that we understand the benefits of ethanol, let's fuel up on ways to increase ethanol usage. The federal government can help spread the use of ethanol by providing an array of subsidies to increase the consumption of ethanol. These subsidies can include tax breaks, grants, loans, and loan guarantees. The U.S. should look at how Brazil has implemented these subsidies into their country. Brazil gives credit to factories that produce cars that utilize ethanol and a tax exemption for customers who bought them. It is common to find, gas, find ethanol at gas stations in Nebraska, Kansas, and Iowa. However, we need to look at ways to spread ethanol usage to more parts of the United States. To do this, we can first look at implementing tax breaks for gas stations that provide ethanol as an option. The government could also help by funding the implementation of building ethanol production sites across the eastern coast of the United States. They could then also impose a mandate to blend ethanol with all gasoline and diesel fuels. Extensive testing done by the Department of Energy has shown that all vehicles since 2001 are made with modern materials, allowing them to run on ethanol blends of up to <clears throat> run gasoline blends of up to 15% ethanol. More importantly, though, automakers approve E15 for use in 90% of vehicles on the road today. Engines and flex fuel vehicles can operate on blends of up to 85% ethanol. Vehicle companies can really help the ethanol industry by making cars that utilize higher ethanol blends, also making all of them flex fuel efficient, and finally, making a model that utilizes solely ethanol. Brazil already utilizes this model and has seen a tremendous difference when compared to a vehicle that utilizes no ethanol. This model, according to the Brazilian transport policy, has reduced air pollution in Brazil by almost 50% cutting their air pollution in half. You, as an individual, can help the spread of ethanol by buying it for your car and utilizing higher blends. And no, that doesn't mean you have to buy a new car. As many companies, including eFlex Fuel, offer cheap conversion kits for cars dating back to even as early as 1980. How this works is that the kit intercepts the signals sent from the car's computer and adjusts the data so the fuel interjectors stay longer depending on how much ethanol you have in the tank. This then leads to your engine being cleaner and letting off less pollution. Your engine might then receive a little gift in the ways of speed and horsepower. Today, we drilled into the problems with today's gasoline. Then, we discovered the benefits of ethanol. And finally, we fueled up on ways to transition to more ethanol usage. If we work together as a society, we can help implement ethanol across the world. In turn, not only helping our country, but the world, making it a better place for our families and kids. I believe that this is the fuel of the future. The voices are right without warning on October night when I was 14 years old.
kill yourself, set yourself on fire. I stirred, thinking I was having a nightmare, but I wasn't asleep. And the voices, low and insistent, continued to speak to me from the radio. Hang yourself. The world would get, be better off. You're no good. Terrified, I crept out of bed and stumbled out of the hallway. But the voices would not be tuned out. You should die. You should have never been born. Someone or something wanted me to die. Who was doing the talking? I turned the handle to the door of my parents' bedroom, looking for safety, but I couldn't wake them. What would I say? Go right in and tell your dad about us. It only comes from what he already knows, that you're different. Disappointment. The voices were right. This was not a man I could confide us hearing things. People living with the devastating symptoms of schizophrenia are often tortured by hallucinations, delusions, and extremely disordered thinking and behavior. In my selection, you will see the start of these symptoms as a 14-year-old girl begins to face inner voices demanding her to kill herself. The Day the Voices Stop by Ken Steele. I wandered down the stairs, but the voices in my head grew shriller and louder till I felt I was drowning in sound. Die, die, die! You're worthless! No good! Do it now, not later. I staggered into the living room and collapsed on the floor. My mother found me lying there in the morning. What are you doing up so early? She asked, shaking my shoulder. I remember thinking my mother had arrived, like a lifeguard, to rescue me, but my relief was short lived. The voices were still there. Na 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 na, we're still here. You thought you'd get rid of us? <laughs> no such luck. I was bombarded by the noise and terrified of the strangeness of what was happening. Act normal, I told myself. I washed and dressed hurriedly, and I went down to breakfast and forced myself to eat. My parents soon left work, and as she did every morning, Grandma let me watch the Today Show my favorite pro television program before I left for school. As I was watching the TV, all these people began to talk about me. Today, Steele will kill herself, roared the newscaster in a voice you might use to warn viewers of a fast advancing hurricane. Hugh Down spoke to me in a deeper voice. Don't kill yourself, don't give up. Barbara Walters conducted an interview with me. So why'd you kill yourself? Did you really mean to do it? I raced out the door. The voices were screaming at me. Run, 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 you coward! I turned right and ran past the school, but did not go in. Instead, I headed for the first next to school. I hoped to hide from the voices amongst the dense foliage, but they found me. You're worthless. Your parents don't want you anymore. You could leave home. Leave home? Better yet, you could kill yourself. Yes, that's the answer. Die. I don't know how long I lingered in the forest that day. A couple of weeks later, Dad came home from excited. The president will be speaking about the Cuban Missile Crisis tonight, he said. I want you to hear what he has to say about the communists. As President Kennedy spoke to the nation, my voice was spewed obscenities at me. It was impossible for me to hear and understand what was being said. The president concluded his talk, and Dad began to speak to me. Here's what I heard. What are they teaching in school? Don't listen to your father. He's no good. About Khrushchev and about those, don't answer his questions. Terrible communists and the plans to ravage the world. Turn it back on them. Turn away now. That evening, the voices went out. Stad quizzed me about what I had seen on TV, what I knew, and what I thought. I did as the voices directed. Put my hands over my ears and turned my back to him. Dad became enraged. Go to bed without dinner. Stalking out of the room. It was a punishment he rarely imposed. Ungrateful. Now see what you've done. You've disappointed your father one more time. Your parents deserve a better daughter than you. Only two things. Reading and writing could tone the voices down. And so I read voraciously. I read my way through the last year of junior high school and wrote frantically scribbling page after page of homework, trying to finish before the voices took over. <coughs> Amazingly, I graduated junior high school with honors. May I discover what was happening to me, or so I thought. For the first three years, I was, at times, able to function in both the event world and my hallucinatory world. But I walked at them where the voices were stepping up their demands that I destroy myself. No simple death for you. Got to send the gore in a big mess. 
That's the way you must take your life. Remember, you cannot be forgiven your sins when you commit suicide. The message was clear. I die, but I fail to achieve grace. Day after day, I flailed about an ocean of sounds so overwhelming that I would sometimes find myself captivated to the voice's demands. Okay, I'll kill myself. Only when I heard my mother scream and felt my father shaking me into consciousness, did I realize I blurted out those words in the living room in front of my entire family. You've got to get that out that door. Run, run, you've got to escape. So I ran away from home. I ran to the same forest from which I had sought refuge the first time the voices has descended on me. Over the last several months, the message had become more potent. The voices, voices had even offered to help, even giving me explicit instructions. Get a rope, 12 feet long and 2 inches thick. Tie the noose in a seat knot and make sure it's tight, tight. At the direction of, of the voices, I'd also take a steps to a fun basement and hid in the forest, covering it with branches and leaves. I had also brought wire fluid and matches and left them in a locker in the same area. When all the preparations had been made, the voices were placed for me. Good, your suicide kit is complete. That night, the night I ran away, I made three different attempts on my life. First, I got up on the step stool and tied the noose around my neck. But even though I tossed and thrashed, I couldn't manage to kick the stool away. I had failed. Tears streaming down my face, I located the charcoal lyre fluid and poured it down my head. I couldn't manage to light a match. The highway, I thought. Half I had dragged myself in my disoriented state. My plan was to leap in front of the car. I stood at the side of the road. Headlights were coming at me now. But just then I noticed spotlights at the top of the car. What if this was a police car? What if the police were coming for me? Panicked, I ran back from the road, back toward the school that sat dark and deserted in the summer night, and clinged to its hard concrete walls for what seemed like eternity. The following morning, I rose and headed for home. Two state trooper cars were parked outside a house. Dad was talking with the troopers. They're going to shoot you. See their gun in their holsters? Your dad is ranging. Have you killed? I froze in my tracks. Dad turned and saw me. My parents had called the troopers, reporting me as a runaway by threat and suicide. They wanted to escort me to the hospital for observation, but Dad convinced them to let him take us to, our, to the family physician, Dr. Sullivan, instead. When we got in, Dr. Sullivan asked my parents if he could speak with me alone. I have no memory of what the doctor said or did, but I clearly recall the looks of worry and confusion on my parents' faces when the doctor called them back in and spoke with them. Mom, Dad, and I returned home. Later that night, I heard my father speaking on the telephone. He was talking about me. He was saying I had a very serious mental illness. It had a long name, and I remember wanting to know how to spell it. That way I could look it up and learn how to deal with the illness, how to get rid of the crazy ideas and thoughts that have been swirling my mind. I walked over to my dad and asked him if he could spell it for me. He handed me a small piece of paper. Schizophrenia.
my name is Kenzie Von Rensel and I do informative. Donald Trump, the former president and a famous politician. Gordon Jonah Hill, an actor who quickly rose to fame for his comedic acting style. Gordon Ramsay, a world-renowned chef and restaurant owner. These three men are very different. But what if I told you they share one thing in common? Can you guess what it is? It's their use of profanity. An article published in the Smithsonian Magazine as of September 2021 states profanity must have the potential to offend, often including phrases or words that are generally considered blasphemous, obscene, or vulgar. However, there is more to profanity than meets the eye. Today, we'll discover the science behind profanity, then dig a little deeper into why we curse, and finally, compare cultural views of profanity around the world. Let's start by discovering the science behind profanity. Profanity is nothing like the rest of our human language. Its roots go wide and deep in our brain in a way that no other language does. Our brains don't even register curse words as actual words, but more as concentrated lumps of emotion. They are even stored in a different part of the brain from every other word we know. An article published in the Center for Academic Research and Training states the Broca area is located in the frontal lobe, and the Wernicke area is in the left temporal lobe. An article published in Mayfield Brain and Spine as of June 2020 states the limbic system is located in the right hemisphere of our brain. It is underneath the cerebral cortex and above the brain stem. The right brain is best at expressing emotions, reading feelings, and being intuitive. Curse words are stored in the limbic system. The limbic system is the center for our emotions. Essentially, Trying to ban words that are linked to emotions is just as impossible as trying to ban emotions themselves. Now that we know the science behind profanity, let's dig a little deeper into the different types. If cursing is considered offensive or wrong, then why do people continue to do it? As it turns out, profanity actually serves a few meaningful roles in society. Steven Pinker, a Canadian-American cognitive psychologist describes in his book, The Stuff of Thought, published in 2005, the five ways humans curse. First is emphatic swearing. This type is using words to show interest or express surprise. We don't use these words often, but when we do, it's to convey that our current emotions matter more than proper social conduct. Next is abusive swearing. This type is used with the intent to hurt others. One can say, you're kind of ugly, to get the point across, but curse words do crank up the beat factor. Another type is idiomatic swearing. This type has no emphasis on a subject, but is rather expressing the peers if the setting is informal. Then there's dispensistic swearing. Dispensisms help us when we're talking about something unpleasant. For instance, if you were being professional, you would not want to say this statement, but rather, this tastes really awful. And then finally, there's cathartic swearing. Most of the time, cursing is an emotional reaction, such as when we are frustrated, surprised, or angry. This is when you stub your toe, or burn your arm. The medical term for this is lasochezia, the use of cursing to reduce pain. In June 2020, Allison Escalante stated in Frontier Psychology magazine how researchers at the Keeley <coughs> University in the United Kingdom conducted a study to see how cursing impacts pain. 92 participants were asked to hold their hands in an ice bath to measure their pain tolerance and threshold. They were given words such as the F word and nonsense words like vouch and twist pipe to say in response to their pain. When the participants repeated the F word, their pain tolerance and threshold increased. 
while the nonsense words did not have an effect. Now that we know the science behind profanity and understand the different types, let's finally compare cultural views of profanity around the world. It's always interesting, even humorous, to learn curse words in a different language. But have you ever thought about the meaning behind them? Steph Kofiman describes in Babel magazine as of May 2021 the different swearing practices around the globe. In 2017, the Canadian Broadcasting Standards Council ruled that the F word was a common part of the French language. What does this mean? It means that you can go to Canada and see French language broadcasts where the F bomb flies freely. Americans frequently use this symbol, which represents okay. However, if you're in Brazil and use this gesture, you're in some serious trouble. The OK symbol in Brazil is equivalent to our middle finger. In France, Poutan is a favorite curse word in every region of the country. It is an old call word which means prostitute. Nowadays, the French, use it to, the French use it to express almost anything. They say it when they drop their pencil, forget what they were supposed to buy at the market, or when their favorite soccer team misses an easy goal. An article published in Jump Speak magazine as of November 2021 des describes how societal pressures to be successful are very strong in Japan. So by calling someone a baka, which means idiot, is considered an extremely heavy blow. Oliver Gee stated in Rocket Languages magazine as of March 2021 how profanity used in Sweden is most often religious, referring to Satan and hell. You can tell someone, go to hell, in most places of the world, as a joke, but this is seen as incredibly offensive in Sweden. Fanta did, which means, may the devil take you up, is considered strong cursing in Sweden. Today, we <coughs> discovered the science behind profanity, then dug a little deeper into why we curse, and finally, compared cultural views of profanity around the world. Whether you like it or not, Cursing is something that impacts more than the eye can see. So the next time you stub your toe getting ready for school in the morning, or just failed that math test you studied really hard for, try cursing. It might just help. I'm Caden Cole, again. We do duet. Yep. I know, I know. The evil laugh is coming along nicely. <laughs> it's pretty good. I mean, if you want to get into the evil league of evil, you have to have a memorable laugh, right? <laughs> Speaking of the league, ah, no response yet. Uh, but my application is strong this year. You see, I have a letter of condemnation from the deputy mayor. <laughs> That's gotta hold some weight, right? Fingers crossed. Hey, Doc. Ah, moist, my evil moisture, buddy. What's going on? <laughs> uh, life of crime. I got your mail. I saw Penny today. Did you talk to her? Ah, so close. I think I'm just a few weeks away the from a real the audible mail. connection. The no, mail. I might ask. Oh my god. Is it from the league? It's from him. I got a letter from the leader, Bad Horse. There has always been a strong.
struggle between good and evil. Everywhere we look, we see examples of heroes trying to make the world a better place. Superman. Spider-Man. Captain America. Wonder Woman. How do these heroes fight against someone who's trying to be so horrible? Today we will see Dr. Horrible trying to be a little bit extra horrible, horrible. as he battles with Captain Hammer. Who will win the battle? Find out in Dr. Dr. Horrible's Horrible Sing-Along Sing Blog by Joss Whedon, Jed Whedon, Zach Whedon, and Marissa Tangeron. Bad horse, bad horse, bad horse, he rides across the nation, a thoroughbred of sin. He got the application that you just sent in. It needs evaluation, so let the games begin. A heinous crime, a show of force. A murder would be nice, of course. Bad horse, bad horse, bad horse, the evil league of evil is watching, so beware. The grade that you receive will, will be, be the last, we swear. Signed, bad horse. Are you kidding? This is great! I'm about to pull a major heist. You know the wonderphonium that I need for my freeze ray? Uh -huh. Well, it's being transported tomorrow in a courier van. <laughs> Candy from a baby. <laughs> well, yeah. do you need anything dampened or made moist? <laughs> um, that's gross. Um, <laughs> thank you, but uh, the league is watching. Gotta do this one alone. Ha 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 ha. Would you lend a caring hand to shelter those who need it? You only have to sign your name. You don't even have to read it. Would you help? How about no! you? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. Um, um, hey, I know you. Oh, cool. <laughs> you do, do you? Well, yeah, from the laundromat. Oh, Wednesdays and Saturdays, except yeah. twice this month, you skip the weekend. I mean, if that was you. I think I've seen you before, so. Maybe, I don't know. I'm Billy. Uh, Penny, what are you doing? Oh, I'm uh, texting. Okay. Yeah, it's very important, Robert, stop. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, actually, I'm volunteering for the Caring Hands Homeless Shelter. You know, there's this great building nearby that the city just wants to demolish and turn into a parking lot, but if we get enough signatures, then we could get the city to donate the building to our cause and I love the sign. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Wouldn't want to turn my back on a fellow laundry person. <laughs> yeah, if we don't stick together, then, uh, you know what? I'll probably see you again. Yeah, yeah, bye. bye yeah. <laughs> she talked to me. <sighs> Why'd she have to talk to me now? <laughs> Maybe I should. No. No. No, I have this remote. I just need to find that van. A man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. Soon, I'll control everything. <laughs> My wish is your command. <laughs> Stand back, everyone! Nothing here to There's see! Man. Just imminent danger in the middle of it, me! Captain yes, Hammer. Captain Hammer's here! No. Blowing in the breeze! No, 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 no. The day needs my saving expertise! A man's no, 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 no. gotta do Don't what a man's gotta do! Oh, oh. A damsel in distress! <sighs> it seems that destiny ends with me saving you. Ugh, you idiot! Dr. Horrible! I should have known you were behind this! You could have killed her! I remember it differently. Oh, thank you so much for saving me, Mr. Hammerman. I could have been crushed under debris or splattered. Oh, thank you so much. Uh -huh. Ugh, are you kidding? It seems that destiny ends with me saving you. Did you stop looking at her like that? When you're the best, you simply can't rest. So what's the use? You almost pushed Penny into the garbage. No. No, I stopped the van. That was all me. The only doom that's looming is you loving me to death. Will you go out on a date with me? Oh, I would love to. Ah, yeah. oh, whatever. Crazy, Crazy little, little thing called love. It's so dumb that we've been coming to this laundromat for so long and never spoke. Yeah, all those monks doing a stunningly boring chore. Well, I actually like laundry. It's like, I love it! Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> so fun. It is. Hey, I love it. this is weird. I ordered one frozen yogurt and they gave me two. <laughs> you don't happen to like frozen yogurt, do you? I love it! <laughs> and look, a spork, my favorite utensil! So, how was your weekend? Did you spend the whole time hunting wild signatures? <laughs> well, actually, I went out on a date. Get right out of town. 
How's that? Unexpected. You know, he's a really handsome guy, and oh, I thought it was kind of cheesy at first. Oh, trust your instincts. But he turned out to be totally sweet. You know, sometimes people, they're just layered like that. What's on the surface is totally different than from what's underneath. Yeah, and sometimes there's an even deeper third level, and that one's the same as the top surface one. Are <laughs> you going to see him again? Well, yeah. Yeah? You're driving your spork through your leg. Oh! <laughs> so I am. <laughs> Hilarious. Okay, my friend, the wait is over. This <laughs> is my freeze ray. And with the addition of the Wonderflonium that I obtained in my famously successful heist last week, no, I stay successful, and that I inadvertently introduced my arch nemesis to the girl of my dreams, and now he's taking her on dates. She called him sweet. How is he sweet? Sorry. <laughs> Freeze Ray! Yeah. So, uh, as of tonight, I'm in the evil league of evil. If everything goes according to plan, which it will, because I hold a PhD in horribleness. Sir, I have another letter for you. Oh, thank you, my trusty assistant, Moist. He saw the operation you tried to pull today, but your humiliation means he still votes no! And now assassination is just the only way. There may be blood, it might be yours, so go kill somebody! Signed, Bad Horse. Kill someone? You would do that? No, killing's not elegant or creative. <laughs> it's not my style. <laughs> but I deserve to and you know I do. <laughs> Yeah. But killing, really? Yeah. Don't worry, we'll figure this out. Crazy, Crazy little thing, comma. So I really don't qualify for this this job, but I just can't seem to get my foot in the door. Well, don't worry, you will. I just I really want to do something great, you know. I want to be an achiever, accomplish something yeah. like Bad Horse. The thoroughbred of sin. Oh no, I meant Gandhi. Oh, that makes more sense. It's like Captain Hammer's always saying. Ah. Right. Him. How are things with Mr. Cheesy on the outside? Oh, they're good. He's nice. I'll be interested to know what you think of him. He said he might stop by later. Stop by here? Well, yeah. Oh, look at my wrist. I should probably go. Oh, wait, what about your clothes? Just go. Yeah. I don't know these. See so, yeah. ya. Just must be one of those faces. Oh, wait, have I seen you at the gym? The gym? Ah, never mind. That'll work out. I'm naturally like this. I would really love to stay in chat, but I should really go. Hammer, hammer, hammer. And in just a few minutes, we'll unveil the statue of the man himself. Thank you, thank you. Justice has a name, and that name is Captain Hammer. Ladies and gentlemen, your hero. Thank you for those kind words, Mayor. <coughs> I hate the homeless. This problem that plagues our city. We should all have a basic... You know what? No. I don't need these tiny cue cards. When I fell in love with my serious long-term girlfriend, Penny, ah, there she is. You know, she's the reason she got me turned on to this whole home. Why can't they see what I see? Why can't they hear the lies? Go ahead, run and hide. <laughs> Say it was horrible. Heroes are over with. Look at him. Not a word. <laughs> now I win, and I get all the cash, all the fame. It's Dr. Horrible's turn. This world is going to burn, burn, burn! <laughs> oh, no sign of Penny. I wouldn't want her to see this. There will be no mercy! Oh, that didn't sound good.
Here lies everything. The world I wanted at my feet. My victory is complete. So hail to the king. Now the nightmare is real. Now Dr. Horrible is here to make you all quake with fear. To make the whole world kneel. Hail to the king. than any other group speech. We aren't allowed to directly look at one another or touch one another, so here's the one. Oh, 
I spread out one for clues. What exactly are these clues that we're looking for? Anything that seems off or out of the ordinary. Paper, <laughs> file, folders, nothing here. I know things have been a little bit rocky between Vice Crystal Gray and Crystal Black lately. It's true. We haven't exactly been seeing eye to eye. Did we do it? Did we discover the murder? Ah! <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. We've had a few disagreements. Uh, That's all. Uh, disagreements. The whole burnt office can hear you too. Well, what were you fighting about? I don't see what educational differences have to do with the principal's disappearance. Unfortunately, it does paint you in rather questionable light. Hey, speaking of paint, check this out. It's a spray paint trail. We should follow it. Maybe it'll lead us to the murder. Are we still on this? She's yes. right. Let's not get worked up over nothing. I really think we should follow this. It could lead to something important. I don't like what? What if we simply split up? This way, the trail leads right through here! Aw, man, we're just back in the gym! Yes, this clue is at up. What are we supposed to do now, Coach? I think we should investigate after Jimmy finds some different shoes. Those are disgusting. What do you mean? What's wrong with my Crocs? Jimbo, you're truly paying everyone. Black paint. Um, <laughs> we have been following your paint trail this entire time. Da -da -da. Okay, hold on, hold on a second. Okay, I can explain. So, I was the one who spray painted Black's office, but she was already gone when I got there, I swear. James Peacock, you better explain yourself. It, it was during the ceremony earlier. Uh, you see, Gray was chasing me, so I ran into Black's office to hide, and it was trashed. So I found some spray paint and I added the message. <laughs> we need to get this mess cleaned up. Oh. <laughs> yeah. This stuff's permanent. <laughs> I meant we have to find Bristol Black. Uh, it's the only way to clear your game. How do we do that? Oh, we keep all. searching for clues. <laughs> A soccer team, a swim team, a track team, a golf team, a basketball team, a... I even think you girls have a ping pong team. It's called table tennis. What's she saying? How am I supposed to build a championship winning dynasty on three measly hours a week? Uh, yeah, not really our problem. No, come on, girls, we gotta protest to run. Bye. No, wait a minute. Give him the itch, it'll take a mile. Don't worry, if the coach goes cuckoo, I'll protect us with this. What? Give me that! Where in the world did you find this bat? On the floor, in the corner. Huh, coach, are you thinking what I'm thinking? All the off-season sport equipment should be locked up in a closet in the locker room. So we check out the locker room next. I'll text you and let her know. Wait, the locker room? Wait, which locker room? <laughs> the boys' locker room, of course! Let's go! What is it? Give, give, give your gifts for the little kids. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Always great to help. It looks like fun. It looks unsupervised. It looks like a food drive. That's because it is. This oh, is the Sunshine Service Group's annual food drive. Who holds a food drive on a Friday night? Let's just have a chat with the club members to see if they notice anything amiss. Hello, ladies! Have you noticed anything unusual tonight? Well, we got this! What is it? Is this something you might be looking for? A Spanish book? Where did you find it? On a table in the see? back. We thought maybe someone lost it. You can give it back to them. How kind. We're the Sunshine Service Club. It's what we do. Well, it certainly doesn't belong in the cafeteria. Coach 
Mustard just texted. They're on their way to the locker room now. Well, I guess we should head over and join them. I'll stay here and supervise. Man, I hate to say it, but you guys are pigs. What? What do you mean? I think it looks pretty good in here. Better than my bedroom, anyway. Does your bedroom also have an army of ants? Oh, they're just after the leftover pizza. <laughs> Canadian well, bacon. Uh, only closets are locked up tight. Which means. Which means I've no clue where that bag came from. <gasps> oh, pizza! Oh, stop, oh, stop oh, eat that. But I'm so hungry. What I want to know is where the pizza came from in the first place. Jimmy, you're such a great athlete, but you need to learn to bubble them. And Principal Black is writing me for the exact same thing. When? Earlier today, when she started lecturing me about my grades. Your grades? What's wrong with your grades? Done! I'm failing. Failing? What do you want? Everything! Not everything! I am passing home ec and PE, but those hardly count. Jimmy, why didn't you talk to me about this? I'll have you know that you're gonna get kicked off the basketball team if you're failing. What? I'll talk to Black. Huh? How? Oh. Shoot. Guess we gotta find her first, don't we? Great. And now we're back to square one. But I don't know what you expect to find in here besides uh, some ants, uh, a whole bunch of laundry, and a couple of pizza crusts. <laughs> the pizza crusts are gone. Yeah. What about the stinky sock? We just consumed about a half dozen ants with your pizza. So what if it's a dirty pair of socks? <laughs> not a pair, just one, and not dirty, stinky. Here, smell it. Oh no, don't look at me. Sorry, I man. already feel like just I'm about stop. to throw up. That's just the ants rolling back up. <laughs> Jimmy, not helping. <laughs> one lone sock. <laughs> Coach, don't be a hero. Oh stop, you kids are just over exaggerating. That's not your normal one of the mill, Tino. It's not. No, it's distinctively chemical like. The stuff they used to embalm dead bodies. Dead bodies? Where? They're everywhere! Jimmy, not helping. Oh, my bad. No, just a smelly song. That's it, dissection preservatives. I know where you should look next. Where? The, the science, science lab. lab. Bingo. Let's go. Hey, the kids. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, Coach Mustard, forgive us. It's difficult to hear you when you're not yelling and blowing your whistle at us. Oh, right. I've been feeling things might go a little bit better if you take the lead on this one, kid. Jeez, Coach, what did you do to him? Nothing! Do you shrink your whistle? Oh, please. Hey, nerds, we're trying to talk to you! Coach Mustard, is there something we can help you end your... Team with yes, Ashley, the sock. Okay. What? You need to find out what sort of chemicals on the sock. Chemical? You smell it. Oh no, we're not falling for that. Coach Mustard, if you don't mind, we would really like to get. Just help me out this one time. I'll make it up to you. How? How will you make it up to us? Uh, um... Oh, oh, pick me, Coach. I'm out of here. Go away. If you tell us what chemicals on that sock, yeah. Coach Master will do any calisthenics you want. Any calisthenics you want. As much as we want. Any it's calisthenics so you want. As much as you want. Whatever you want. So, where is that sock? Heads up. <laughs> well. Most likely chloroform. Hundred steps now, please, Coach. That's it. Do you need to run some sort of test or at least smell it? Smell it. I wouldn't recommend it. One strong whiff of chloroform and a person could pass out cold on the floor. Oh, Speaking gosh. of on the floor. Ah, uh, yes. You owe us a hundred sit-ups, coach. Oh, come on. You can't be serious. So any idea if we can track down the source of that chloroform? 
What about Penelope Plum? She's your club president, right? She quit. Why did she quit? Because she failed PE and refused to step down from office. Are we done? Yes. Yes! Don't you see? No, not at all. Oh, come on, we've got to catch up with the others. Let's go! I'd like to make an accusation. Okay! Penelope Blum in the principal's office with the stinky sock! Huh? I'm a genius. Jimmy, what are you talking about? Okay, well, earlier today, Penelope found out that she was no longer science club president due to her failing grade in PE. In a rage, she quit the science club, but not before lifting a tube of chloroform from the science lab. What happened next? Well, Penelope went to find Principal Black, but she was in the locker room talking to me about my grades. I left, and then Black left, and Penelope grabbed one of my socks. The stinky one? Yes, the stinky one. Or at least it was stinky after she dumped chloroform all over it. Then she followed Principal Black back into her office. And then she changed her grade on Black's laptop. Oh, this suspense is killing me! As far as I'm concerned, there's just one question left. And what's that? Where's Principal Black? Exactly. Oh, relax. Your beloved principal is fine. In fact, she's probably waking up right now. Oh, hey. You're all here. What? Did I miss the ribbon-cutting ceremony? Principal Black, you're back! Um, so let's give them one more round of applause for all their hard work.